Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa and if you're new here, hi, my name is Melissa and I speak about missing children on my channel. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified every time I upload because I don't have a schedule right now. I'm trying to get a schedule as soon as possible. My schedule, I would want it to be Monday and Friday, um, but I'm not, I'm not for sure for sure yet. Um, and I also, I want to try to see if I could do night should i upload on night or should i upload on during the day i kind of want to do night because i don't know me usually personally i'm always on youtube all day but there's time where i do nights more than days because i do have a daughter so so we today we're going to be talking about the case of eloise eloise so let's go ahead and get started it's a pretty name eloise Okay, so Eloise, um, she was born October 8th of 1961, and then she disappeared on January 12th of 1996. It was an eight-year-old girl who was abducted from her home in Balmerys, Victoria, Australia, at 12, on January 12th of 1976. No one has ever been arrested in her decoration, which is not considered a cold case. So, Eloise's four-year-old brother raised the alarm when he noticed that his sister was not in her room at 7.30 a.m. There was no sign of a struggle. He later told police that he had heard robbers who had kidnapped her, but was too scared to say anything because he thought they would take him, too. He described hearing crackling noises that police believed to consist with steps on the seat, grass, floor covering um, their their bedroom. Police believe that Louise was lured from her bed by someone who she knew and trusted and had simply left the house via the front door, which had been left unlocked. Another possibility was that she may have been abducted by parlor known to be in the area at the time. A dark green car speeding down Scott Street at 2 a.m. was reported by a neighbor. Another neighbor reports seeing a green Halden station wagon she did not recognize parked near the um, Louise house and around midnight. And same another neighbor report having seen a young man walking down the fence line of the of a Louise house, making her feel so uneasy that she crossed the street in in a woodland around the same time. Molly. A neighbor from further down the street saw a young men jumping the fence to the their house property after running in front of her car and crossed the street at 2 a.m. Dolphin owned Smith heard a child's cry in a car door slam and the same reporter also hearing this at the same time. Bark from a tree outside Woodish window was found in her bedroom. Floor, a small hole, a bent cut in a, a fly screen of her window, but forensic tests revealed that it had been cut from the inside. Police believe the hole was too small to have been used by the abductor, and scientific evidence found unlikely that Woodridge was taken through her open bedroom window. Both parents were intentionally treated as suspect at the time of Woodridge's appearance. Both her parents had been having affairs and her father was believed to be depressed due to the looming divorce. He was to move out of the, the British, British had gone missing. Senior Castable Neristini said in 2002 that Patsy told police at the time of her daughter disappearing, she felt that her husband was involved in the disappearance as a means of polygramming the inventable and as a way of her spitting her. On the night of Louise's disappearance, her father had gone to bed over an hour and a half after, and around an hour after his wife, he left the front door open because he was unaware Patsy had forgotten to close it. A passage light was left in the hallway when the children went to bed each night, and it was turned off by the last parent to bed. The It was turned off by the parent, the last parent who went to bed. So whoever went to bed the last they had to turn it off. Um, but it was stated by police that on that night, Lindsay did not 
turn off the passing the passway hot light. At around 4.45 p.m. the next morning, Patsy awoke to go to the toilet and note that the light was off. It was almost certain Louise had already been taken by this time. Despite a very extensive search and a 10,000 reward, which today is a quality of, doesn't even say, but okay, <laughs> post on 1976. No trace of wood had been found. Homicide called Casey Detectives investigated the case in 2001, but to no avail. Lizzie Woodridge died in 2017, 41 years after his daughter's disappearance. In October 2023, modern crime just journalism, John Silverter, note that Louis School, Burmese Prime School, became the subject of an inquiry into the activities of five pedophilias former teachers in the 1960s and 70s. Between 50 and 100 children were alleged molested. Fact unknown to police investigating the abduction of Louise at the time. And that is a sad case of Louise. To be honest with you, I mean, her dad is not alive, so I kind of really don't want to sit here and it's good, you know, like it's es es escalated, or I don't even know what word I'm looking for to say that he probably most likely did it. I mean, I've heard of parents who are getting a divorce, and there's going to be times when one of the parents have custody of the child, and the other parent's like, nope, not going to happen, and they end up abducting their own their own children and I mean yes there's cases that luckily the children are alive um there's one case and I cannot I think I did a video of him but his mom ended up kiss, kidnapping him um me personally I thought she, she was she has some type of mental health but she went to the school kidnapped him um, I'm guessing they didn't inform the dad until the dad, I guess, realized that he was, he was gone. Um, mind you, it was his mom who picked him up. So I don't know if the dad, personally to me, I don't think the dad never crossed his mind that his mom would do this to his, like, abduct his child. Um, so they went on a road trip, um... They saw them together in certain places. Um, they found her in a hotel. She had an alive herself. Um, and still to this day, nobody knows where her son's at. Um, she left the note saying that she had sold him to somebody and, you know, he's very taken care of and that nobody's ever going to find him. Um... I just don't I just don't understand how you as a mother could do that and why would you put your own family through this pain like I said she did probably have mental health but for you not to even tell you like I personally kind of do believe the whole she sold him to somebody and and she did said that she was nobody's ever gonna find him because she wasn't gonna tell i mean she she had a life herself um but with this case this is just my personal op opinion but i think that i did it i mean the the fact that the hallway light was on when her mom woke up and then it was off that does not make sense there's no there was no forced entry but i also because the neighbors heard you know her cries and stuff i kind of want to lean she was probably abducted um i don't understand why the cops didn't investigate the school like you know because sometimes when especially with missing kids children they do end up going to the school and asking the, the friends and be like, hey, do you know anything about your friend? Was she, 
did she say anything like that and so for them not to do it that's kind of weird but yeah because here i mean i don't know about in, in australia but here in um in the united states if a child goes missing they do go and talk to the school just to see if it was anything suspicious or anything um that was going on with the child um but i think that should have been one of their first um places for them to go to somebody's to their her school i feel like if they would have gone to her school they would have probably solved this case because for teachers to do these type of things to a child is just disgusting and they're animals i mean you send your kids to school so they can learn and then you find out that the teachers are molesting your children that would piss me off but i do feel like i'm leaning more to that theory than the theory of her father doing knowing something about it or doing something yes the door was unlocked there was no forced entry i mean she probably went with somebody she knew but what gets to me is the whole that the neighbors heard the cry why would you cry to go with your father unless he unless he said something or had something in his hand you never know but like i said i don't think it was a dad part of me does not think it was a dad i think she did get, get abducted and it could probably would have been i mean if god forbid said that she went through the same thing with one of her teachers and she probably told the teacher that she was going to tell on him and call the police and he probably panicked and he just did what he did and it is sucks it really sucks um but yeah guys that's it let me know what y'all think and i'll see you soon with the new video